doing something to deal with it. All right, so a loop on the ground, that's what log is the acronym for, is basically this little transformer attaches via B and C. There are different versions. This is the LMK004BNC from LMKTS.com matching box, which connects to two leads, which they sell a matching wire for, that you can have 50, 60 feet, even up to like uh, over 100 feet if you want to, of wire. The idea is that this literally, literally lays on the ground in a big loop form. And the idea is that it's going to provide slightly lower noise receiving capability and also give you kind of a different reception pattern. Everything I'm showing you right now you can buy parts for and you can build this either as a kit that is put together. By the way, LMKTS also has kit versions of these and pre-assembled. I just went with the pre-assembled job along with the pre-cut wire terminated with the, the ends there. So what we're going to do is I got to punch a hole into this wall to be able to feed my 50 feet of coax and then get it over to my radio. But we're also going to have to trench underneath the walkway that this tripod is sitting on. And I'm going to show you how to do that too because it's all on the ground, right? All right, off in the back corner here is the fiber optic input for the internet. So if we come in a couple of feet off of that, that's about where I need to be for accessibility standpoint. So I'm going to pop a hole right here. And then we're going to test the fit for the coax. I'm using a masonry bit, specialized masonry bit with a hammer drill. This is my Milwaukee 12 volt fuel. Again, I'll come across here. I'm guessing about right there, so let's go for it. All right, now, due to waterproofing and all that other fun stuff, I bought this coax. This is uh, ABR Industries. This is their RG8 that has a foil plus braid. So we don't have to worry as much about losses, but at the same time, we don't really want a lossy cable. So I'm going to snip this to make sure that we've got at least a, a small, a large enough hole to be able to deal with this uh, coax pass through. I've got to feed it out from inside the shack area, but um, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. The hole is perfect. So we'll add a bit of waterproofing to this at the end. We'll put some caulk or silicone on here. But let's feed it out, and then I'll uh, show you again how we burrow underneath the front walk so that you can run the coax. This is direct berry coax underground. All right, so step one, we're able to drill our hole and route our coax. The next thing I need to do is build a PVC rig that I can use to push under this walkway here and then feed the coax through that. Likely I'll just uh, push in to one direction, tape my coax to it, and pull the hose back out. Pretty simple, at least from my viewpoint. So I'm gonna cut this to fit based off of some simple measurements here, literally just eyeballing it. And if I have to, I can adjust it later. We're literally talking about PVC pipe uh, couplers here. So no great big loss if, if I need to go buy some more. All right, let's take a look here, eyeballing this. My estimation is that I'm gonna to have to go underneath the walkway at kind of an angle about that far, and I'm gonna be dragging the coax from this end and through. So I'm gonna try and bore in this direction after digging a trench on both sides. So I'll make it about this long. There's gonna be fittings on both ends, so we're gonna get a couple of inches on the end. I always buy this, and then I never use it, and it goes bad. So I just always expect I'm going to have to buy more of this stuff, primer and cement. So here are our fittings, Get a couple of them here. So obviously we need to go threaded connector to threaded connector. PVC has got to be on the PVC ends and then there will be another side which will have the hose line, this is going to be the nozzle end. This is the hose end is going to go on like that. And then this is the feed line for the hose end, which I have a on off 90 degree angle connector. So PVC pipe is in the middle here. So let's bodge this together. Really easy. Do not use primer. Purple is the primer. That's the cement. 
if you're watching me through this whole process, you probably caught that I did this wrong. So that means I either have to go buy an adapter, um, which I can do, um, or I can just cut this and make it so this is the female end. So we need it like that so that the hose can, uh, can attach. So I guess I'll go take care of that in a minute here at Home Depot. Okay, now we have the right hose fitting. Uh, and as usual, a good ham radio project is dipped into the evening and I don't want to give up because I want my loop on the ground. So I think I'm going to at least try and trench uh, the hole in darkness and see how it goes. Uh, so let me get the hose end on this, get some water going through it and see if we can make this work. I'm going to carve out a hole here with my lache digging tool. Just to get this ball rolling here. I'm aiming for the hole that I made over there. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah. That was close. I'm a little off the mark. Uh, let's see. It looks like it's over here somewhere. So I'm gonna have to reposition. All right, you stay here. Where are you? No, I got, uh, no, don't have it. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Who wanted to play in the mud today? I guess it was me. I probably need to let this drain. So I think this is a pause for today, unfortunately. <laughs> day two, I had a very long day, both yesterday and today at work. So only when it's dark, I literally have shop lights set up to try and do this. What we still need to do is we need to terminate the end of the coax. We need to string the wire in the yard and then use lawn staples to hold it down so that the grass will eventually grow over the top of it. And then we need to run it, the rest of the coax into the shack and get it onto the radio. I was initially planning on using my Pensil soldering iron to do this work, but um, turns out I lost it. I don't know where it is. So we're gonna be using my tried and true butane soldering iron. So let's get this uh, tape off. You know what? It's fine, let's just snip the end. So I'm gonna take this end here. We're gonna get a fresh cut. Take your electrician shears. Now I've never actually crimped a BNC connector. The uh, transformer for the antenna uses BNC, which was a bit of a surprise to me. So I think I need to, we're gonna start a little bit long and we'll trim the, the end to fit. I'm gonna go with that for right now. Okay. All right, so there's our twisted elements, our braid, our shield. So we're gonna take the shield. Oh, you know what? <laughs> no, we got a couple of things we gotta do first, don't we? We need to add our heat shrink and the collet or collar of the connector. If we don't do that and we start messing around with the braid, we're gonna have a bit of a hard time uh, getting it actually all soldered and crimped at the end. Okay, so there's the two pieces, collar, heat shrink. I'm using the heat shrink for weatherproofing and we're gonna use coax seal and the whole nine yards to protect the connection. So I'm just taking the braid and I'm pulling it off, pulling it away from the foil of our line. Okay. 
and now we will heat up our torch. And it's getting hot in that window. You see it? <laughs> well, that didn't work. So now, backup plan. We've got a jackery. <laughs> or not? Okay. There we go. So now we're gonna do this with the Hawko iron. Because <laughs> this is just taking way too long. But first, I'm going to check to make sure that it's a good fit. No, the body's not good. Okay, good fit. Let's do the thing. So, I'm going to clean off the iron and apply the heat from the back of the pin. All right, we take our connector. It kind of goes into place. This can only go in so far. We've hit it. I'll now take my collar here, slide it up over the top. And where's my crimper? Hold all this together while you crimp. Okay, let's do a check. Good connection. Okay. Now, take that heat shrink right over the top. I'm gonna have to work it a little bit. Thank you, Christmas light extensions. So for the fun to really start, we have to connect our, our guy here. That's our transformer, which I'm going to bury about right here. Uh, so I need to take up some of the coax slack. So we'll put it out like that. I don't want to get it too muddy. As you can see, things are still kind of wet out here. Um, so we're going to set it like that for now. I'll get it where I want with the line running, and then we'll, we'll adjust as we need to. And then to wrap things up, um, I'm gonna put on some coax tape. In fact, I'm gonna do that now for the uh, coax connector. Get it all the way up into that guy. In fact, I could even go so far as to just wrap the whole thing with this once I have it all done, and I, I may do that. I haven't decided against that. So anyway, the unit does come with a pre-measured wire, and this is a 50 ohm, tr ohm transformer. You can get uh, a 70 ohm transformer if you're so inclined. I went with the 50. So here's the pre-cut wire, some pretty nice stuff. Now obviously this is a loop antenna that we're talking about here. So you want it to go into like a square or a loop, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. Just get it out as best you can. I have some staples here, lawn staples. Oh yeah. These are some big boys. I'm going to just stake this guy down for a second so he doesn't move. Well, my lights run out. Sorry for the harsh light and the Christmas menagerie. Yeah, I know Leia's gotta organize this and do all this other stuff. But I'm gonna take this wire now and I'm gonna go around my yard to the best of my ability and I'm gonna stop to lay down some staples as I go. So let's do it. Alright, there's our box. I decided to relocate a little bit. There's our brown line. Lots of staples. I'll probably add more tomorrow. There's our first turn in the dark, which goes across the... WL. So, hello, good evening. 
Uh, what a better example than this. This is a ZL station. Um, I have the antenna running. We're on the remote. This is the remote. Uh, this is the loop, the log on the bottom. We have the volume off on the primary antenna. This is the loop on the ground. Okay, well, the series needs a frost to ripen, isn't that right? That's S5, yes, so four S units. I sound like an expert. And it's got an S9 uh, to 10 signal to noise ratio like difference that. between the two. Still, uh, I'm well in today's time, you know that. Okay, here is. Now, step IR. You're still hearing him. Right, we're still hearing him, but the signal to noise okay, ratio is so, uh, like, you know, so a lot more noise, right? On my noise on 40. ZL6 Charlie Charlie Yankee. Wow, amazing. Anyway, that's exactly what I wanted to get. That's perfect. So um, it's it's not going to be the best receiver, but it gives us a good juxtaposition between my step IR and now the loop on the ground for receiving. So what's the verdict, my opinion on the loop on the ground? Well, it depends on how you think about an antenna like this and what your home setup is like. I have a radio with my ICOM 7610 that I have multiple secondary antennas, multiple receive antennas that I can have on the radio at any one time. So I'm able to switch seamlessly and listen to one antenna on one ear or receiver in the other receiver in the other ear. And so I can devote a loop on the ground to one ear while listening with the other one. And when I have a high atmospheric noise or just the ambient noise level that I have here in the suburbs with the step IR, I can lower that one down and bring up the loop on the ground. And I can usually get really good results as far as clarity without bringing in so much of that noise background that a lot of you probably hear the quote-unquote frying eggs and bacon type sound you can mitigate some of that with the loop on the ground not entirely your RFI problems are still going to be your RFI problems some folks like to have a vertical antenna and a horizontal antenna and then to be able to switch between them or listen to them simultaneously by putting one in one ear and the other in the other ear to give you a polarization difference as far as what propagation may be like and the effectivity of that antenna, that receiver. Loop on the ground seems like a novel approach for you shortwave listeners. This seems like something that might be worth a shot, particularly if you are in some place like an HOA where things like this would probably not be allowed to be in the air, you can easily get along with this on the ground and no one's really gonna know. A couple of things to note, if you didn't pick up on this, this is not a transmitting antenna. You cannot transmit on this. It's much like a beverage antenna, which you may have heard of uh, in the past. Those antennas are designed for receive only capability. While I've only had this for a couple of weeks and this was all shot pretty much uh, before and during the Christmas holiday season, I haven't had much you know, radio time to tell you more effectively what I think about it. Usually, whenever you hear someone talk about an antenna, the important thing to ask yourself or ask them is, what is the signal to noise range difference? So if my ambient noise floor is say a six and I hear a station come in and they're at a seven, an eight or a nine uh, versus your receive antenna is nothing or one and then they come up to like a three s unit well assuming that all things being equal you're hearing roughly the same person same tonal quality and all that stuff your difference between your noise floor and what you're hearing them at the peak is that signal to noise range difference and i need to put some more time into it but i'm noticing about um, equal S range difference. So if we see a signal on the step IR and they are an S9, I would likely see them as an S5 or an S6 on the loop on the ground. So yeah, we have cut the signal to noise ratio somewhat, but when compared against the noise floor in my environment, um, it's still doing pretty good. Somewhere between three and four SNR signal to noise rate, right? So 
like I said, work needs to be done here, but this could be a really novel approach to you in your home location if you have not a great receiving antenna, but you're using it as your transmitter. Oftentimes, it's the receive antenna that, that most of us have problems with. So a loop on the ground with, say, a vertical, a hamstick, or something along those lines might be what you need to do in your case. If you have a radio with one antenna port, like a 7300 or a Yaesu 710, something along those lines, they make switches that are either RF sensing or their active accessory connected to each other that when you start transmitting it shuts off the antenna the receive antenna right our receive antenna so you're not putting rf down that and only goes out your transmitting antenna mfj makes one i'll have a link in the description that you can check that out anyway i would love to hear your comments are you a loop user or maybe you're a bog user there's beverage on the ground as well too uh, from that aforementioned antenna we talked about Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As always, we appreciate you. As we're getting into the colder season, if you'd like a, a little warm hoodie, go check out hamtactical.com. It's the merch store for the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I really appreciate all the support. Probably my last video that's going to come out before the end of 2023, so I just want to say again, thank you everybody for watching and listening to our podcast. I've had a great time making content with you all. It feels like we're kind of in this all together, and uh, I appreciate talking with you in the Discord, uh, sometimes on the Facebook group, and definitely during the live streams and the after chat. So again, just thanks for everything. And I'll be talking to you again real soon. 73.